All right, the next plate in this series, we begin with Hitler. Hitler was a Roman Catholic. And let's look at what Catholicism did and that organization did with Hitler. A concordance with uh, Germany. Here is Hitler and his Catholic counterpart. They gave Hitler power, worked with Hitler. They fund both sides of the opposition in war. They give people power and let them wreak havoc. Now also, uh, we, we're going to see that this salute uh, is actual, in actuality the Roman salute. So he was a devout Catholic but he was also a Thule Society member, secret society member, and so outwardly Roman Catholic, inwardly secret society. There's that Roman salute. We see also uh, the current Pope, Pope Benedict, as being a Nazi youth. Here's a German paper describing that. He looks like the Vatican has a similar Roman salute with both hands. Now, sometimes on the internet, they actually cut his, uh, they crop this image uh, to to make it look like a single arm salute. But this is the, actually the full image showing the uh, two arm salute, Nazi uh, Germany and their alliance with Islam. And you can see the Fez here and him doing the Nazi salute. And therefore, uh, this alliance was so uh, powerful that uh, you can see that even the terrorist organizations, Hezbollah, uh, and their uh, military and their uh, grow raising of their uh, children in this militant Nazi uh, salute style. We'll see more of that. Here is Hamas, Fatah. The leaders are the ones that are responsible for all of this. And I'm telling you, these leaders, uh, I've come to believe, are in the hands of Rome already. You'll see that uh, later in the religious section. They are the opposition. Uh, the, the mode of operation is uh, be the opposition, join the opposition, and always uh, run this dialectic on humanity of always having the enemy and they have certainly created this enemy Islamic uh, the Nazi connection to Islamic terrorism I can see Himmler as our Ignatius of Loyola Adolf Hitler uh, said this and here is Heinrich Himmler the head of the SS and you can see the SS and the skull and bones the order of death Heinrich Himmler was also a devout Catholic uh, and you can see Germany was at it even prior to World War II. This is the Second Reich, and uh, these are leaders of the Second Reich. Here's the uh, Maltese cross that he's wearing, which is a papal knighthood, and again the Maltese cross there. Now moving on with Ignatius of Loyola, which is the Jesuit general, and the, I, uh, the fascination with these skulls, and whether or not this is a saint that they are adorning here. Uh, the skull of a saint, why the, in the world would you want a skull next to you and put a crown on that skull? Uh, perhaps it's necromancy and the worship of the dead. Um, this is something that I cannot understand. So here is a sculpture of, of Loyola with a skull. Uh, this is uh, uh, the second Jesuit general. I forget his name. Boer uh, starts with a B. But there's the skull. Now you can see here in Freemasonry, they actually kiss the skull in Freemasonry. So here's a Freemason with the skull. The skull and Bone Society say that they have Geronimo's skull in the their, their uh, lodge. We'll get to that second. Here's another secret society and the use of skulls. Skulls and bones are normally uh, refer, referred to poison and pirates. And they always like to... to uh, uh, have some ne negative connotation to it. The number 13, um, pyramids and bondage, uh, biblically. 
Skull and Bones Society at Yale University. Here is the Father Bush. All three of the Bushes were members. Here is Father Bush, Grandfather Bush, and George W. Bush. In 2008, the election, I believe, what, 2000, I'm sorry, 2004, the election was against uh, two Skull and Bones members, John Kerry and George W. Bush. How in the world do you get two Skull and Bones members running for office uh, of the President of the United States unless things are rigged on both sides. These are blood oaths that they take. The rituals you can find that were on the news are sick. Why would anybody in their right mind go through rituals like that? Um, you think it's all fun and games and just uh, fairy tales and jokes? I'm telling you there is are spiritual uh, forces behind these things and that's why they do it uh, for power and money and greed and ultimately for uh, being with Satan that gives them that and their spirits. This is the guy that actually asked the question, how can two uh, Skull and Bones members be running for office at the same time? He got tased and uh, they couldn't even, and he, uh, they didn't even answer his question. John Kerry didn't answer his question uh, and they ran him out. That's the kind of uh, society that we live in when you are, are a conspiracy quote a guy. And I'm ta not talking about Comet Elenin coming and destroying the world, but I'm talking about things like uh, things that we can tangibly understand with Skull and Bones members being uh, warring, uh, going uh, for for the president. Skull's uh, movie, uh, and you see war is mentioned here. They love war. You can see here now uh, there are four Skull and Bones members. Uh, here, the cult shown president at the signing of the USA's National Security Act, which created the CIA. And so you can see these secret societies being involved. The Knights of Malta are heavily involved. And all of these secret societies are connected in one way or another. And so here's a Father Bush and Son Bush. I can't even believe that we even have the idea of having a son related uh, and being president. Usually when you uh, go and are hired for a company, they ask you the question of whether or not you have any siblings or any relatives that are in the company so that you can um, alleviate any bias toward being being um, uh, hired for that company simply because you have family members in that company. Here we have presidents that are family members. Don't you think that that is odd? Here is Grandfather Bush now uh, shaping his... Uh, uh, protégés up and his cronies up and that's Nixon there. Look at this recruit recruited by MI5 Mussolini uh, recruited by intelligence and Mussolini is the supposed to be the opposition they run both sides of the coin. Now look at this Freemasonic apron here's the front side and the back side and by the way, uh, why Freemasons actually wear an apron is they believe it is representing the covering for sin uh, back in Genesis. Why in the world would you be covering your sin with a skull and bones uh, in this manner? This is all abomination type stuff. Here's skull and bones on rings. Skull and bones and the fascination with skull and bones. Here's Rihanna. And this is why I, I truly believe, I've come to believe and understand that these actors and these musicians like this are simply mind controlled and they are bloodlines. It's their family and their children. They do wicked things even to their children, grow them up in satanic ritual abuse and this is why they can do such six things sick things as they do. And that beating up of Rihanna by supposedly her boyfriend um, Chris Brown is an example of of her getting out of line and, and having this abuse done to her. Uh, control minds, you can see a downward cross, upside down cross, control minds, we'll get into that in the second part. But uh, just bear with me uh, and understand that, that I've come to believe that. Here's Skull and Bones with Johnny Depp. All of your fraternities are Masonic and have their roots in secret societies and Freemasonry. I have a friend uh, I went to high school with, I was in a fraternity, he had his initiation at a Masonic Lodge. 
and this is not uncommon at all. And you can see skull and bones everywhere. All of the symbols of Freemasonry and all of this, this uh, symbology uh, riddled into uh, fraternities and sororities. Royal arches, stars, you can see the similarity between fraternities and Freemasonry.